Hey, viewers, I'm so glad that you joined us today. Uh, we are talking about finances in 2018 and how to get your households in order. And let me tell you, Howard Dayton has been a champion in the life of my husband and me for the past oh, I don't know, 20 or 30 years. And he has really helped us understand what God's word has to say about finances and stewardship. I know that's a word that we don't like to use a lot of times, but it's such an important word, how to give and save and spend and invest getting out of debt. We're going to be talking about all kinds of things today with Howard, uh, and I think you're going to really be enjoying our time together. Welcome with me, won't you, Howard Dayton? Well, it's just great being on the Aww. program again with you, Barbara. Thank you so much. So glad to have you. And you were, as you know, you've been super influential in Tommy's and my life, starting back in the 80s, I right? know, it's a, been a long time. And your <laughs> husband, my goodness, he's responsible for thousands Aww, of people you. in Central Florida Aww. learning God's way of handling money. And there's Thank no you. telling, you know, how many uh, family members Thank have been you. touched through your yeah. family. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You just made his day. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well deserved. Thank you so much. Well, Howard, um, recently you lost. Before we get into all of the biblical stewardship, yeah. I want people to understand who you are and what your journey has been like, yeah. because you have been on quite a journey these last several years. Yes, it started uh, five years ago uh, when uh, Bev had a, my wife of 46 years had a double mastectomy. Mm -hmm. uh, six months later, we discovered it spread to her bones uh, and then um, spread to her liver. And she went home to be with the Lord uh, August 14th. But really, as I reflect on it, Barbara, the journey for me started about a dozen years ago. Mm. Uh, I was asked to write a book, Money and Marriage, God's Way. And during the writing of the book, the verse that God would not let go of me with <laughs> was uh, Ephesians 5:25. It says, "Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, and gave Himself up for her." Yeah. It's a sacrificial love, and I think mm. it's the most important responsibility of the husband in the yeah. marriage relationship yeah. is to love your wives as Christ loved the church and give yourself up for your wife. And about what does that, that mean exactly? Well, though? let me tell you practically okay. how. Uh, I implemented it, okay. and I had a real close friend who said uh, about that same time, Dayton, I don't care if you remember anything else <laughs> I ever tell you in life, remember this, uh, view every request by your wife as an opportunity to serve her. Oh. View every request by your wife as right. an opportunity to serve her, and uh, so I started doing that about 12 years ago. Now, first, when I did it, sometimes I would say, yes, darling, but on the inside, I was sure. grousing. You sure. Know? Sure. But um, uh, pretty soon after I started to do it, um, I, I started to experience God's joy. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. who lives in all of us who know yeah. Jesus Christ personally, was pleased yeah. that I was serving Bev and allowed me to experience his joy to the point where I absolutely loved serving Bev. Wow. And somewhere along the journey, I felt God saying to me, uh, whenever Bev asks you to do something, if possible, yeah. drop what you're doing and do it. And I didn't realize it at the time, but what it communicated to Bev was, I'm his priority. Yeah. More important than my yeah. work, more important right. than my recreation, more important yeah. than my friends, uh, putting her first. And so when she um, uh, started the journey with, with cancer, um, and you know, the, past, the last six months were particularly difficult, mm -hmm. Not once did I ever feel put upon as the caregiver. Mm. I mean, I, I, it was really uh, the hardest of times, but the sweetest of times. Uh, loved. And you also had seven years of training before right. she got sick. Right, right? exactly right. That's exactly amazing right. that God knew That's what was right. going to happen, yep. and he was training Howard to be this incredible caregiver seven years down the road. That's right. And the last month, it was really interesting, talked mm. to a close friend, and he said, you know, Howard, when you walk into her room, uh, you're, you're on holy ground. Mm. It's a sacred event mm -hmm. because God loves Bev like crazy. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of her pain, he wants her to know that he loves her. Mm. And as caregiver, mm -hmm. as husband of 46 years, you'll be one of the primary ways yeah. that he communicates right. you were that the instrument. to her. Mm -hmm. And so before I'd walk in the room, you know, I would consciously 
And I pray, Lord, uh, I submit myself to you. I invite the Holy Spirit to love Bev through me. Yeah. Um, and I'd say I'd, we'd I'd done that for about a week, and then something happened in our marriage. I mean, it was totally supernatural. Don't have any explanation for it other than we became so much closer. It was so much um, uh, more sweet. And yeah. we had a great marriage to begin with. And, and I think it is because the Holy Spirit, Barbara, knows how to love somebody mm -hmm. in a way that we can never do it yeah. as humans. It's, yeah. it's got to be, you know, the, mm -hmm. the Spirit of God speaking to the person's heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's really, I mean, those two factors, you can never request buy your wife an opportunity to serve her and to be conscious to submit yourself to Christ, asking his spirit to love your spouse. Uh, those two things are crucial in having, number one, a close marriage. And it also affects money yeah. because yeah. most arguments over money aren't arguments over money. Yeah. <laughs> Something else in the marriage relationship has been fractured and uh, we, we never had a disagreement, let alone an argument, those last 12 years. Wow. <laughs> because we, you know, the husband mm -hmm. uh, was serving his wife, and it was really interesting. I would be much more excited about spending money on something she wanted hmm. than on me, mm -hmm. and she felt the same way. Yeah. Uh, and that, that was... Uh, a well, it cool takes thing. self out of the right. equation. It's exactly. a totally selfless thing. Yep. And this is going to sound really silly, and it is in a <laughs> lot of ways, but I've always told my husband, if you would just do everything I tell you to do, we would never have any problems. See, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't they get that, Howard? No, but if our viewers today, I know we're going to be talking about finances, but if they don't hear anything else, what a great, great lesson to be yeah. given an opportunity to serve your wife. And as, as you're serving her, then she in turn has nothing but want to serve him in return as well. Yeah, right? that's exactly It works the way, both ways. It, it does work both ways. But it ways. has to start with the husband. I really believe right? it has to start with the husband. And Bev never took undue advantage of it. I mean, she wasn't shy and asked me to do something. Yeah. And. Um, but even if she had, and let's talk about me, yeah. even if I do that, yeah. still gives him an opportunity that's right. to serve. Oh, it right? does. Absolutely, which is huge. Which and, I might do that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. I, I'm kind of excited. <laughs> about this opportunity. Listen, and, and if Tommy doesn't do that, <laughs> yeah. you email me. Let I me will. Know. Yeah. You're going to be the first to know, Howard. <laughs> so then Beverly, after these 12 years, Beverly went to be with the Lord yeah. in August, and God has given you a word about your purpose from this point on, right? Yeah, right. About uh, five days before she went to be with Christ, I was on my morning uh, prayer walk in um experienced, uh, again, the, the Spirit of God allowed me to experience His joy. And then just a few minutes after that showed me that I was to be f focused on what we call our Charting Your Legacy study. We've got a lot of small group studies um, in Compass, but this one uh, is specifically for those who've been entrusted with a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's hard mm -hmm. for people who have a lot of money to finish well. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, yeah. there's a lot more failures than there are people who are going to hear, well done. Right. And so that's, that's my calling is to do that. And really excited in, in Central Florida, we've, we've had two pilot groups ready for some Good. multiple pilot Good. groups now. And so uh, that it's, for me, it's been a lot in my grief journey mm. to have clarity in my calling mm -hmm. so I can focus on that right and then grieve in a, a appropriately yeah uh, because Howard really if you are for 12 years your primary ministry was Bev right you know and for that to be gone and no longer you know and I, I know that will resonate with a lot of viewers today who are like my kids are out of the household my husband or my wife is no longer my mom my dad whatever right. it is that you've been used to serving once that's over what would you advise that viewer today who is feeling lost and without purpose? Yeah, I think that, uh, at least as I take a look at, at this, the number one thing that's helped me, and I'm only four months into this mm -hmm. griefing process, I tell people I, I was married to Beth for 17,019 days. Wow. 
And so I've been in the grieving process for 135 days, yeah. so I'm not an expert. Right, right. But, um, you know, certainly recognizing that uh, she is with Christ in heaven forever, yeah. and I'm going to be there with her pretty soon. That's right. Um, you know, that's the foundational thing. We can, as Thessalonians tells us, don't grieve as those who have no hope. I yeah. mean, we still grieve, right. but we've got this great hope. Yeah. Thank you, Lord yes. Jesus, for yes. that. Um, but I think, you know, obviously friends and family mm -hmm. uh, praying for me and, mm -hmm. and encouraging me has been used, huge. Our kids and grandkids have become even much closer mm -hmm. um, as a result of yeah. walking together through this, mm -hmm. having clarity on calling. I think, I think music. Um, there's, mm -hmm. there's, you know, a handful of songs that uh, uh, have just ministered to my soul. Mm -hmm. um, Give me, know. do you remember one of them? What, well, I what remember would... all of them, really. Okay. Uh, you know, what a beautiful name yeah. by Hillsong. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> my father, what is it, um, uh, uh, Chris Tomlin's. Uh, is that what a good, good father? What a good, good father. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Mandy Harvey mm. uh, has a beautiful one on, on uh, you know, it is well with my soul mm. and all those and others yeah. have, yeah. they reach you in a different place. Right. Lots of tears. Yeah. But um, it's a, it, it's but a the blessing. emphasis goes from thinking of only that person to praising God. Right. You know, that's what exactly worship music right. does for me. It takes the emphasis off me, yes. my problems, my situation and places it Right. upward on, yeah. on my Heavenly Father. So it has to help. I agree with you. Yeah. And then the other thing, Howard, is finding a new purpose in life. Yes. That purpose is gone. You've fulfilled it. Yeah. God continues to have a plan for our lives and a new purpose. And your new purpose now is continuing to be within Compass, within the ministry of Compass and helping people chart their legacy. That's right. Right? Exactly right. Let's go back to, and thank you for sharing all that. Oh, I know absolutely. it's very personal. It's very yeah. raw for you right now because you are fresh in the grieving process. But God did a remarkable work with you back in 83, I want to say, 1983, where he spoke to you. Was it 83? Uh, the, when he spoke to me about, about the economy. About the crown. About, yeah, the uh, Basically, it was back in uh, 77, oh, when he, 77 when he showed me that, that we were going to have a difficult okay. financial time in yes. our lives. And then it was 85 that he, he said, gave you crown, gave me crown, which became, which also now let's talk about compass because sure. that's the ministry that you're involved right. in now, which is still a small group Bible study exactly. with lots of different components. Yeah. Um, people can do a crown study, a compass study by through their church, through people yeah. that are trained? How, how can people that are listening today, we're gonna to talk about what it means, right. but first of all, how could they be involved in it? Yeah, it's very easy. We Bob Shoemaker is is our local, he used to, it used to be Tommy Beck, yes. it's now Bob Shoemaker, right. who's the city our, director. our city director, yes. and just does a phenomenal job. And uh, they could uh, go online, okay. uh, compass1.org. Okay. And we have online classes. We have Good. classes that are face-to-face. Uh, -face. Mm -hmm. Which are uh, my favorite. Uh, mine too. Because there's right. accountability and you're praying for people. And That's I right. loved way back when we took our first class. If you don't do your homework, you don't memorize scripture, if you don't take this seriously, you don't share. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, but. <laughs> we love you, but just sit there and try to listen because you didn't do your homework That's and right. you just need to learn. And, so, we, and really the reason for that is that we want to. Uh, people sharing out of, um, we want to hear what God's saying to each person. Right, Because right. it, it, it always ministers to me. I me mean, too. I've, I've led me 67 too. of the groups and I learn something new every Absolutely. single time. Absolutely. Uh, because God's speaking through his people. So a lot of people, Howard, when we talk about stewardship, it's such a churchy kind of a word, but they think it means giving everything away. Right. So how do you go to make it palatable? How do you go from making something not easy to listen to, to making it something that people crave and want to yeah. give well, and other things. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and essentially there, there are 2,350 verses uh, in the Bible that deal with how to handle money. 15% uh, of everything that Jesus said has to do with it. And I went into the study of the Bible initially thinking that it was just going to talk about giving. Right. But it really talks about how you handle all your resources from God's perspective of work, mm -hmm. how to earn money, mm -hmm. to saving, investing, getting out of debt, teaching your kids, mm -hmm. giving, uh, as, as my saving, son, saving, right. 
as Matt said, it's the whole enchilada. Right. You know, everything right. you need to know. Yeah. All the foundational principles are there. And Larry Burkett used to say, you know, anything I can talk you into, somebody else can talk you out of yeah. it. Yeah. But if it's based on God's word, uh, that's when the radical uh, life change takes place. And I just think God is so uh, desirous mm -hmm. of his people mm -hmm. handling money his way because yeah. it's it's different than right. the world around us. Right. Um, because for me, the light bulb Howard was understanding that I didn't own it. Right. As soon as I got those verses out of First Chronicles 29, 11 and 12, everything <laughs> in the heavens and earth is yours, O Lord. That's right. That made a big difference in the way that I looked at my possessions. Yep. My car gets a, a, a fender bender. I'm in a fender bender. It's God's car. That's right. I'm exactly going to do the best right. that I can do to manage what he's given me. Yeah. My children are his. My yeah. husband is his. My house is his. My car, my everything belongs to him. That's and right. so it, the onus is on him. Yeah. It takes everything off me except to be a faithful steward. That's exactly right. So Howard, what do you think is the most important principle other than the ownership that people will glean from the compass study? Yeah, I, I think ownership is the key. Uh, but really the thing that set me free was recognizing, and you, you've alluded to it, you know, God has a part with our financial life and mm -hmm. we have a part. God's part, our part, yes. God's part is he's the owner. Right. He's in ultimate control of every event. Yeah. He's ultimately the one that provides for our needs. Mm -hmm. Our part is we've got to be faithful to work his mm -hmm. way, spend his way, give his way, save his way, get out of debt his way. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, it, for me, it was freeing yeah. to recognize, okay, I've got to focus on, you know, executing yeah. what God's made really clear for me to do, and then I can be content mm -hmm. uh, at any any one period of, of, of time, mm -hmm. knowing as long as I've been faithful, uh, you know, how much she is going to entrust to me uh, is totally up to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there, there's a, a lot of contentment. Yeah. It comes from that. Right. The pursuit of riches, riches are not a bad thing. The pursuit of wealth for the sake of wealth is a bad thing. Yeah. And First Timothy uh, 6, you know, those who want to get rich mm -hmm. follow into a temptation, mm -hmm. uh, many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin, ruin and destruction. I mean, it's pretty dangerous stuff. But it's a hard balance because we balance. want to make money. We sure. want to do the best with the gifts and abilities that God right. has given us. We want to provide for our families. We right. want to give them all the advantage, advantages that, they, that we can possibly give them. So how do you strike a balance, Howard? Well, I, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, what's our basic mindset? Do we, are we conscious that, you know, Christ is the owner? Mm -hmm. We're the manager, which is a very high position. I mean, think yeah. about it. We get to handle... Yeah. God's His stuff. stuff. Yeah. I mean, the it creator is. of the universe, he's yeah. entrusted us with that. And when I have that mm -hmm. view, I want to be as faithful as I can. I want to be creative in my business or, you know, uh, try to uh, yeah. please him right. uh, by doing all the things that, that um, you know, a, a person of integrity would do in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately up to the Lord as to how much he entrusts to me. But I, I can be, as long as I'm focused on pleasing Christ and not myself, you know, building up mm -hmm. riches right. for, the for sake Howard of, right. and whatever Howard's agenda right. might be for getting a lot of stuff. Um, that's, you know, we can go for it as, as long as we've got the right perspective. Right. Let's talk about giving for just a minute. Yeah. Um, 10% to the church is that sort, I mean, that's that's been our desire to do, to always tithe to the church and then give above and beyond to other ministries. Yeah. I know the Bible doesn't necessarily, Malachi addresses it, but does it actually say the 10%? Does it say the tithe? What are people mandated to do from scripture? Yeah. It, when you look at the Old Testament, and clearly a tithe was was required. But what uh, does that mean? Is it 10%? Right. It's 10%. It was back then? Right. Too? It was 10%. Okay. It, in the Old Testament, they actually gave more than a tithe. I mean, it, was, it was a tithe and then every third year they they gave the second tithe okay. uh, during the okay. year. Uh, in addition to that, to take care of the poor uh, mm -hmm. and needy mm -hmm. uh, was key. In the New Testament, the word tither, 10%, uh, 
uh, is is mentioned uh, five or six times, and it, there's not a specific thou shall tithe. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the tithe is a great place to start. And would you always say it goes to the church? Yeah, I mean that's okay. that's my heart. That that's, is the storehouse. Yeah, it, well, it's uh, it's really an opportunity for us to um, uh, confirm uh, our commitment to the local church, okay. uh, which is the foundation. Right. And right. then as as the Lord. Uh, lays things on on your heart as the Lord prospers a, a person, uh, then to give over and above that to the poor and needy. That's a huge uh, part of what we should be doing. Something Orphans and widows. That's right. Right. That's right. Orphans, widows, and and the and the needy. And I think we need to look at our giving and really analyze it. And I know you've taught us to mm -hmm. do that at the end of the year to sit down with our families and to just really talk about what we want to give. And, and a lot of people, Howard, are super private about their giving yeah. with their families. Right. I mean, it's okay to be private to the world. We're not supposed to tell everybody yeah. what we're doing. But to let our families know that they're involved in the giving process is really yeah. important. It's a brand new year. It's not too late to do that. We can sit down in January with our families yes. and say, yes, we're tithing to the church and this is how much it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And then above and beyond that, where what would you all like to give? Yeah. I know Tommy's been real good about doing that mm -hmm. in our family and, and saying, what are the ministries there? Because the things sometimes that, that I love, the ministries that I love, mm -hmm. he's not as involved in and vice versa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think there needs to be that sort of thing. There's not a percentage of, of above and beyond the tithe in your mind. Right. I mean, it, it really is up to the individual. I, I'm close with a fellow who uh, he and his wife give 50 percent. Um, Above the tithe or total 50 percent? Total 50 percent. Okay. Uh, but I mean, it's it's different. Well, it depends on where you are in your life, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. That's right. What your expenses are. I bet exactly. you, I'm not going to talk to you about that because I know you, that would embarrass you, but I know that you're an enormous, enormous well, giver. Well, I just want to be faithful in every area and, mm -hmm. and giving is well, you you have know, it's for, for our benefit. I know, uh, I know. We get the benefit. We're blessed to give yeah. than receive, and there's a purpose for it. I will say one thing. This is something I've, I've learned uh, just since Bev went home, Barbara. Um, I just felt God saying to me, uh, go through the house and ask three questions about everything mm. you have. <laughs> uh, do you need it? Do you use it? Uh, or is there a special memory of yeah. Bev attached to it? And if, if all three of those are not there, I've, I've given it away. Good. And Good. it's made life so much yeah. simpler. Right. <laughs> um, right. And it's also affected my spending. I didn't think about this, but I'm asking hmm. two of those questions. Do I really need it? Yeah. Uh, will I really use it? And what I'm discovering is I'm spending a whole lot less. That's good. Uh, which frees up money right. uh, so that we can give it so right. I can... Uh, help my family when Absolutely. needed. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Howard, we're just about out of time, but before we go, I want us to at least talk about debt because here we are after the holidays yeah. and a lot of people have a lot of debt. What do they need to be doing about that now? Uh, yeah, Marvin, you know, the average person that has credit card debt has about uh, $600 of credit card debt from the Christmas season. That's all? <laughs> that's all. If, well, that's the average person, right. you know. For, uh, and the unfortunate thing is they don't typically pay it off until October. Wow. The following wow. year. And that's a lot of interest. At it's a lot of interest percent. and they put themselves in the position that they don't have anything saved for, for the 2018. Follow. That's right. right. Exactly. Right. So the key is to what I call create a, uh, additional surplus uh, in your budget. Okay. By spending as carefully, as wisely as you can and by praying for the Lord to give you creative ways to earn additional income. It might be that you work overtime. It might mm -hmm. be that you even have a part-time job on the weekend for four hours a, right. a, a week, whatever right. it takes to get that debt paid for as quickly as possible, then to begin to save yes. budget for the uh, next Christmas. Right. That's that's really the key. It's a difficult cycle, but thank you for that encouragement today. Yeah. Thank you for being here with us. And um, I, I just feel so fortunate, viewers, that we've had this time with Howard Dayton here today, founder of Compass Finances God's Way. You want to get your financial household in order for 2018. You want to get that debt paid off. Let's do something about it in a positive way. God will do his part as we do our part. Be faithful. Go to the website that's on your screen now to get more information about Compass Finances God's Way. Again, we're so thankful to God for bringing Howard Dayton across our path today. Stay with us. We've got more coming up.